Uh, here's a prototype I just finished that integrates a Raspberry Pi with AWS IoT and Amazon Alexa. I'll show you a demo first and then go into the various parts of the project. Here's a demo of the integration. Uh, you can see some hardware hooked up, just a simple LED hooked to an, a GPIO pin on the Pi. And then you can watch as uh, the, the light, as I say, Alexa, tell Pi thing to turn the light on. Light is lit. Alexa, tell Pi thing to turn the light off. Light is off. Alexa, tell Pi thing to party. The Alexa part of the integration is set up in Amazon Developer Portal. That's different than Amazon AWS. So you sign into the Developer Portal and you go to the Alexa tab, choose the Skills Kit, and there you'll get a list of your Alexa skills. I'm going to choose the Pi Thing skill to work on today. Uh, within your skill, you have several configuration pages. The first is the information page. And an important thing on this page is the invocation name. That's the name you use when you're interacting with Alexa to talk to your skill. Second part is the interaction model. This is where you set up what are called intents. And I have for, our, for this application, three intents, one to flash, one to turn on, and one to turn off uh, the light. With the intents, you then associate utterances. Now, utterances are the things that people person might say to uh, to have that intent fire. Uh, in this case, uh, I have a couple of utterances for the flash intent, several for the on intent, and several for the off intent. Uh, one thing you can do with intents uh, is you can add the, uh, something called a slot. So for instance, if I was to put in here, the word color, uh, that would mean that my utterance could be turn the red light on, and then when that intent is sent to my back end, the word red would be sent uh, in the color slot. You set up slots with this add slot type here, and you set up all your slots that way. In the configuration, we set up this skill to talk to a Lambda function. And the Lambda function is just a place where the code lives. Uh, it's a, I'll get into the Lambda function later on in the video. Uh, but here I selected Lambda function, then I named the Lambda function that uh, is going to be used to, to hold the code and run the code for, uh, for this Alexa skill. When that's all set up, you also have a test page you can use. A test page lets you type in utterances, um, such as turn on the light. And that will show you the request that's being generated from Alexa to your skill handler. Uh, in this case, you can see it's an intent, and it's got the intent on. Uh, and then, because my Lambda function is hooked up, this is what my Lambda function actually responds with, and it tells uh, Alexa to say, light is lit. Another thing you can do on this page is do custom JSON. So if you don't want to, if you want to make a request that doesn't correspond to an utterance, that might be like a launch request or a cancel request. Um, you can just set that up directly here in the JSON, send it, um, and you'll see how your function responds to that. The handler that backs the skill is a Lambda function in AWS. I'm going to go to its configuration. So this Lambda function is running in Node.js. It has a handler name of index.handler, which means my code has a module called index that exports a function called handler. <laughs> There is an authorization role that lets me set security. Lambda operate Python role is what I named it, and it's over here. And you can see that it is uh, it allows some logging, and it also allows the Lambda function to operate the IoT platform from AWS. And we'll get into that a little bit later. Triggers are set up on the Lambda function. This is what causes it to run. In this case, we set it up to be triggered by a skill. Now, I do have an open question with Amazon about the security of this. It seems that setting up a skill trigger will allow any skill to, act, to invoke this Lambda function, not just my own, because there's no tie between the, uh, between the developer portal and the AWS. Uh, I'm not sure how this gets limited to just my own skills. Uh, there doesn't seem to be a way in here to set a uh, limitation to a particular application ID. Uh, when I find that out, I'll, mo I'll modify it accordingly. You also, in the function, have access to the monitoring, which gives you some invocation history, accounts, duration, errors, and gives you access to the logs. So going over to the code, the code has this single entry point, which uh, I told you about before. It's called handler. 
uh, and it is exported from a module called index. Um, I'm using the latest version of the SDK, which has a couple of nice fun features. One of them is this uh, token-based dispatch, so that can be dispatched based on intent name or on a specific kind of, uh, of request. And if you look at one of these one of these uh, dispatches, there is a function that's called, um, in this case, light flash. And then uh, when that continues, uh, emit the actual message for the device to say back. And that's actually chosen from this localization list right here, which is another function of the SDK. So by by a uh, using this this token here selects this message from the particular language that I'm in. So if I had more than one language, I could add those to this to this uh, table, and this code would all stay the same. Uh, going over to the light module, it's responsible only for working with the uh, IoT platform. Uh, there are three functions: the on, off, and flash. The on and off actually set the what's called the shadow state. Uh, the thing shadow is a is a persistent store of device state, and we can now set in, using these functions. We set the lamp uh, value to true or the lamp value to false when we want to turn this on or off. And when we want to flash, we just send a message down to this pipe. Uh, and I'll show you on when we get to the actual device code uh, how that how that uses those to to manipulate its actual hardware. Uh, let's go over to the IoT console. So in this IoT console, we can go over to our shadow device. Oh, which bar are you in? Uh, you can see the shadow state says that the lamp is currently true. But if I say, Alexa, tell Pi thing to turn the light off. Light is off. You can see that it turns it to false. If I say, Alexa, tell Pi thing to turn the light on. Alexa, tell Pi thing to turn the light on. Light is lit. It lights the lamp by setting this state to true. On the Pi, I'm running a Node.js program that interacts with both the connected LED and the AWS IoT platform. The program responds to changes in the shadow state as well as MQTT messages. It first imports the IoT SDK. This is a different SDK than the one used by the Lambda function. The one on the Pi uses certificate-based authentication and MQTT or MQTT over WebSockets instead of the normal AWS token authentication and REST. The program also imports a module that provides the hardware interaction. Because I'm developing on a Mac, I wrote two versions of that module, one to actually drive the Pi GPIO hardware and one to simulate it on a terminal. The program initializes an IoT device with the locations of the security artifacts and a client ID that can send and receive MQTT messages. So that's what the device does. There's a higher level interface we also initialize called the thing shadow. Thing shadow takes the same kind of, of uh, parameters, the locations of the certificates, uh, as well as a client ID. This client ID has to be different than the low level client ID or else they will both fight for connections. Um, I set up listeners on the high level device to listen for state changes in the desired state of the light and also on the uh, MQTTQ, the low level device, to listen for uh, flash requests. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, launch this module now with the uh, with the simulated hardware device because I'm, not, I'm on a Mac right now. So here we go. We're going to start it up right now. And that you, you set it up uh, to do that by setting up an environment variable that's not production. And that will ask it to use the device simulator, which you can see here. Uh, so right now it's telling me that the lamp is on. I can uh, I can actually cause it to go off by saying, Alexa, tell Pi thing to turn the light off. Light is off. Or Alexa, tell Pi thing to turn the light on. Light is lit. And you can see that it went to off and then went back to on. You can also say, Alexa, tell Pi thing to flash the light. And now we have a flashing light. Um, let's go over to the light module itself. The light module first imports the RPI GPIO mod, which is a modified version of the standard RPI GPIO module. Uh, I made this modification because the standard module doesn't allow it to be run as non-root. Uh, my modifications allow it to be run uh, as non-root. 
Uh, hopefully that will be incorporated into an upcoming version of the main RPI GPIO par, uh, project. Uh, pin 40, that's where I've hooked the LED. Uh, and then the main routine is this service routine, which actually just pulls a queue and handles anything it finds on the queue uh, by doing one of these set off, set, uh, set on, or set flash. Um, that way, the functions that we export from this module on, off, and flash, all they do is push onto the queue a command. This makes it a nice interface for the index. It doesn't have to wait for hardware drivers to get done before it can continue on its way. It just sets the state that it wants and lets the hardware module take care of it. So that's a quick description of my prototype. Um, I'm going to do a few things uh, more on it before I start working on a, some production projects. Uh, uh, first thing I want to do is try to do communication the other way from the device to the cloud through the IoT platform. Um, and then there's a list of to-do things, uh, cleaning up, automating the builds, and automating the deployments. Um, but I hope you enjoy, and feel free to file any issues you find or contact me if you want to talk about it. Thanks.